day my aqua friends today we are going to do this seabird and i start off by doing the background wet on wet i am going to go over this paper a lot with my one and a half inch brush that i'm using and i'm as you can see very careful as i'm getting all the areas around the bird wet and the colors i'm using um, a cerulean blue I have horizon blue that I'm using for these lighter parts here. So just filling in as much as I can. While it's wet, I'm still dropping in more color. whatever blues that you have on hand pick a, a variety from some light blues to um, some darker colors in the same sort of uh, color family if you're going with cool blues or um, warm blues and in the reference photo the ocean does get aqua towards the bottom of the wave so I will be using um, some marine blues in there as well so you see how I'm dropping in color around the bird's head okay, and adding some waves. Bringing in a little bit of indigo to darken up the waves. Now the brush that I'm using is a round 12 and it is the Velvet Touch series, which I really like. Just taking a rag to get the spots that went over the lines a little bit. Now also to note that if your paper dries fast and you have to re-wet the bottom area where the wave is under the wave, go ahead and do that before you drop in your colors because we do want to be working wet on wet for the background so it stays soft and hazy looking out of focus because our main focus of course is the bird in the foreground. So while everything's still nice and wet, I'm putting in all the colors I need to before it dries. All right, so now I'm glazing. I'm taking a very, very diluted mixture and brightening up that color because our bird is white and I really want him to pop against that background. adding a second layer of the blues for vibrancy. Right now I'm re-wetting that bottom part, carefully going just within the lines. And we're going to up the vibration. I mean the vibrancy. <laughs> we're gonna up the vibrancy of the aqua colors. So when I'm bringing in these darker colors, I'm just making 
a more concentrated color using less water. I'm lifting. Now, once, once everything's dry, what I'm doing here is I'm using a scrub type of brush to make the wave, the, that white wave, very hazy because I want to make sure there's no hard edges. This needs to be out of focus. You don't want the background competing with the foreground. And wherever I might have went over on my bird a little bit, I am just tidying up the edges there. So now I have these sponges. There are uh, a few bokeh lights in the reference photo. They're very light. And um, I also wanted to include them. So I'm just using damp sponges of different circle sizes. And I am twisting a little bit so that I could pick up some of that pigment. And I don't want it really in your face type of bokeh. I'm just doing it ever so lightly. Just like a suggestion almost of um, these lights on the water. If you don't have sponges like this, you could also use any sort of circle template and just use a scrubber sponge that's wet to pick up some of the pigment. So once everything dries on the background, we are going to start working on the bird. I am just getting him nice and wet because our first layer is also going to be wet on wet. So let's talk about how to paint white, a white bird. Well, obviously a, anything pure white is really non-existent in nature because it all has to do with the shadows in order to shape uh, a white animal. So there are warm shadows in this reference photo and there are cool shadows. So wherever I see hints of yellows, blues, even pinks, purples, um, you know, I'm dropping in those colors as I see them to, to shape the bird. Also make sure you have a very good drawing before you start to paint. That makes a world of a difference. I would even have to say that 70% of a good painting has to do with um, a good drawing to follow. and a good plan. Some techniques that you might think about using, uh, I practice on scrap pieces of paper. I map out the colors I wanna use to make sure everything is gonna look cohesive and nice together. Um, all these add up to a successful painting. So this first layer of paint on the bird, I'm just trying to get in all of the major colors that I see. I'm not concentrating at all on any sort of detail. This is just blocking in the colors. It's, it's like you're underpainting.
So some of the yellows that I used were um, yellow ochre, uh, sepia. I also have Van Dyke Brown <clears throat> and neutral tint. Sometimes I use a spray bottle to uh, add a bit more water for a softer effect. I lift a lot. As you can see, I'm putting paint on, but then I'm taking it off in order to make him more three-dimensional. Wherever I see highlights, I pick off the paint. So once your painting is dry, I'm going to go back in to do some of the details. I'm starting on his face. So Van Dyke Brown. This is neutral tint. He's got a very dark area underneath his chin. And I'm making very short strokes wispy strokes trying to, um, you know, mimic uh, the feathers. So some areas I wet first and then I come back in with the colors I want to use and spread that pigment around. So see, this is my second layer, and I'm st I still have a very light hand. My paint consistency is very watery um, because it is a white bird, and I'm uh, building up these different shadow areas very, very gradually. doing more detailed part on his head. This is the main focus, his beak, his eye, and the head and everything else. I just kind of done it very gently. Uh, I don't want your eye competing with too many things. You want a focal point in your pictures and the focal point here is his, uh, his face. So I'm working on getting uh, the shadows of his eye 
that three-dimensional effect so it actually looks like an eyeball. This is Blue Horizon I'm using. It's a very light pastel-y color and he's got this beautiful blue around his eye. Drawing in all the shadows and all the different textures that I see on his beak. I'm slowly building things up here. Adding in more shadows and colors that I see on his beak. So that's the first detailed layer of his head. Now we're coming in and we're going to use the very dark, deepest areas that I am doing with neutral tint around his eye. Going over that dry area with more blue. I'm using some Van Dyke Brown and some Burnt Sienna on his beak there. So some areas I'm painting, you know, wet on wet and dropping in colors to let them mingle on the paper and other areas like a lot, a lot of the parts on the top of his beak, I am dry brushing effect those colors in. So as one area is drying, I go down and I work more on his beak until the eye area dries. Putting in the pupil. The brush.
brush I'm using for this has a very, very fine tip. If your brushes don't have a fine tip, you might have to use a detail brush that's like a size two or even a one. really start to see that three-dimensional look now. The more detail I put, the more shadows, the more contrasts that you put, make sure your darks are the darkest that they need to be. So notice I put a paint I put paint on but I do take it off quite a bit to get back those highlights and to take paint off you just use a damp brush and you go over that area and dab it I wipe my paintbrush off on a piece of paper towel constantly fine details on the beak. Lifting up. That brush I'm using is like a scrub brush meant to pick up highlights like that. And it's um, very coarse, it's very stiff. going through adding in a bit more shadows on the feathers I also saw that I needed to darken up underneath that wing So constantly checking my reference photo, looking at the values I see, what needs to be darker.
And that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. I'll see you next week. Happy painting!